One of the biggest challenges in stem cell research is starting from embryonic stem cells that can make all cell types in the body. So they have thousands of different choices. And the way I like to think about this is actually uh, like driving or plotting a really complicated trip. So say that you sit down in your car in San Francisco and you want to get across the country to Boston. But there's many more destinations beyond Boston. There's a whole country full of them. So um, if you really don't know the different roads that you need to take to get to your destination and all the different stops you need to make along the way, it would be virtually impossible for you to wander by chance into Boston or your, your city of interest. And that's exactly the big problem now with stem cell research, that we have a cell type that we want to go to from stem cells, but we just don't know all the intervening paths and complicated routes that we need to take. So our study was really mapping out this process of stem cell differentiation and figuring out to get from stem cells to another cell type all the steps we need to go along the way and all the different signals that are needed at every step. What we did is that we really took a step-by-step -step approach. So in the first step, when stem cells um, become more specialized cell types, they can make two things. And those two things can make then four things. So at every single step, cells can make only two cell types. So we realized if we can break down this huge complicated process into this quite simple one where cells come progressively divide into two cells and then two, form two different cells, that we could maybe get a handle on this really complicated process. We clearly mapped out the signals that guide them to become one cell type or the other. And this was very important knowledge from a practical perspective because we realized that by providing the positive signal to make cells into one cell type, of equal importance, inhibiting the signals that would make them otherwise become another cell type, we could really force stem cells to only become a pure population of a single cell type. Basically, using this quite simple approach, this vastly complicated, uh, simplified this great issue in stem cell research by really allowing us to force stem cells to become only one thing. So I think that the really the ultimate goal of this would be to assemble a human cell atlas or hu very human cell map that so if we could really have a really good map of how stem cells turn to something we say we start from stem cells point a we want to get to any cell type point b and we really know exactly how to get there and th what to do and what not to do in order to get there like a google maps of how to get to different cells and then really produce a whole spectrum of different cell types that patients might need the preceding program is copyrighted by the board of trustees of the leland stanford junior university please visit us at med.stanford.edu.